Hello, my name is Matthew Pfeiffer with MattPfeifferCoaching.com. Welcome to my YouTube channel. On this channel, I create content and videos about toxic, narcissistically abusive relationships. And if you have a question that you want me to answer on this channel, make sure you send it to JustAskMatt at MattPfeifferCoaching.com. Again, that is JustAskMatt at MattPfeifferCoaching.com. Just make sure you keep that email two to three paragraphs max, and you're also very direct and to the point of what your question actually is. If it's too long, long if it's too lengthy, or if I don't understand what you're asking, unfortunately, I will not be able to answer your question. Also, make sure you hit the subscribe notification and the bell notification so you're notified each and every time I upload a new video. I upload new videos on this channel five days a week, Monday through Friday. So with that being said, let's get into this email. So this email is from a person who is having trouble keeping her emotions in check. And this happens, this is very common when we come out of the relationship, but she is constantly, and, and she describes it as borderline harassing the narcissist, trying to get him to admit to the faults and to the things that, he, that he's done. And so let's get into this email and let's piece together some things because this is very common for people to struggle with these type of issues. So here's uh, the email. Uh, hey Matt, please do not uh, post my name or email address. And I never would. And for those of you who are thinking about or considering writing in, I would never, ever, ever post your name, your email. There's been times and it happens every once in a while where someone might either accidentally slip up or they just don't know. And they put in, put in names. I always take them out. Even if it's necessary to place names, I always change the names to create to make sure that everyone uh, stays safe and everything stays confidential. So uh, nothing ever gets shared, period. Uh, so this email continues still currently going through uh, uh, arrangements for my child and separation. How do I stop myself from always trying to get him to admit the shit he's done? Right. So this is very common. People struggle with this, right? People want and need closure. But let's uh, let's continue. I can't stop sending him the proof of pictures of the girlfriend. This is something that's key. And we're going to circle back to this here shortly. I can't stop sending him the proof of pictures of the girlfriend he was with while living with me or anything else that I can bring up. And there's a lot. So there's a lot of evidence supporting his cheating and um, and the things that he's done. He never can admit. We're going to circle back to that. He never can admit. Let's we're going to circle back back to that here in a second, too. He can never admit, and, and I can just keep throwing shit in his face, and I'm borderline harassing him, really. We're going to circle back to that borderline harassing as well. I'm so angry and hurt. He can use my messages against me for sure, and I still don't stop. Keep in mind, this person is going through um, arrangements for, for their child, right? So what she's talking about is that these messages that she's sending him can be used against her and probably will be used against her in court. And this is something that's very common. He has devastated me and never expected him to hurt me this badly. Uh, this feels like a nightmare. And so number one, I'm very sorry that you're going through this. One of the things that we have to understand when we have this level of rage, right? And we are now in, in what, what uh, sounds like, right? A fight trauma response we do people all the time want to talk about the fawn response it's very common for people to talk about the fawn response uh, the people pleasing and uh, or the freeze response things like that but it's a whole nother thing when you're stuck in fight mode where you want payback where you where you have this ball of rage and anger towards this person right so i want to break this down let's circle back to uh, to a couple of different things, right? How you can't stop yourself from getting him to trying to get him to admit the shit that he's done. You have pictures and you also said that he can never admit. Yes, he can. He just won't. And one of the things that we have to get to a point to, right, is that what you're doing is there's a level of control here. 
we a lot of times on you know regardless if we're talking uh, talking about my channel or other people's channels we talk about how the narcissist is very controlling and that's very true but quite often the codependent the the victim in the relationship also struggles with control the type and the level of control that that they struggle with is trying to control the way that other people think and the way that other people feel, right? In, in situations like this, trying to admit we need to let go. What I tell people is that the things that you try to control, guess what? They end up controlling you. Notice what's happening. You're trying to control, trying to force him to admit to the things that he's doing wrong. But because, not because he can't, the way that you described, admit it, he won't admit it. So then why won't he? Because you're playing right into his hands. Right? You are literally giving over this case. And so we need to, A, start practicing a lot of mindfulness to uh, I always describe, uh, describe melting that big ball that big glacier of anger melting it down and it's not going to heal itself overnight but also let's talk about this closure that you need it's very common for people to want and need closure for anything right but let alone narcissists with a narcissist they're not going to give you the closure and you're giving over. you're literally giving over your power over to this person who will not give you the closure that you want but you don't need the narcissist for closure you actually already have all the answers. You just don't like the answers that you have. He, you mentioned that you already have the pictures. What else do you want him to admit? You have the truth. There's nothing else that he can give you. Let's not forget, he won't give it to you. So we have to now begin to put these pieces together ourselves without this person's help. You may not have all the details, right? You may not have the details that you want or some, some of the details that you have, you don't like them. You already know that he was with somebody else. He doesn't need to admit that, right? We're talking about someone who's manipulative, someone who's lying, who, who lies, right? And, and if we look, I don't know how long the two of you guys were together. Let's just, for sake of argument, uh, let's say that you guys were together for 10 years. For 10 years, right, we have a certain pattern of behavior. I have a feeling that this is the pattern of behavior that you saw of lying, manipulating, gaslighting, right, not providing closure, not, not communicating well with you, right? So why would we think that he's going to start now? Why would we think that after a breakup and after being caught cheating and these sorts of things that all of a sudden he's going to turn into a good person? Right. One of the so the first step is that we have to admit to ourselves, not looking for his help, in this situation, we need to start journaling and we need to get this, all of this rage and all of these, this pent up, these pent up feelings, right? Uh, the, all of this resentment that, that has built up, a lot of this resentment that has built up is probably coming from a point that you either felt like you couldn't or you didn't speak up during the relationship or, uh, you know, and so you have all this rage, you have all this resentment that is just now spilling over, right? It has to go somewhere. Our emotions despite people thinking that if you push them down and suppress them, they actually don't go anywhere. They don't go anywhere. They literally get trapped in our body. So what happens is that you have all of this rage that has been pent up for however long that you guys were together, however long that you were suspecting that this cheating was going on. You probably suspected it for a long period of time. And then once you found out, once you actually found out the truth, once you saw the pictures, once you started to piece everything together, there was boom, these pops. And now all of this rage that you wanted to speak up about or the times that you did speak up and he lied and you accepted the lie. All of a sudden, all of that rage, right, you knew Right? A lot of times people say things like they'll, they'll say like, you know, I didn't know this person was cheating. I didn't know that. And I challenge that right internal internally, intuitively, like you may have accepted the lie because you weren't ready to um, break up the family or you weren't ready to go through a divorce. You just weren't ready to go through that process yet. But internally, you knew something was up. And so uh, the, when we look back at those moments, we can't hand over our power and hand over the keys to our emotions 
over to a person that is lying and a person who literally wants to see our devastation. You know, one, one of the reasons why is because you have a child at stake. There's a bigger issue here. Right? So you need to ask yourself, is it worth, is your child worth getting this person that's a liar and admitting to, to admit the, per, the things that you already know? Provide yourself the closure. It's not comfortable. It's not easy. Right? So quite often we might want some details of things that we don't know. But you already know, you, you can piece those parts together. You might, for example, you know that he's a cheater. There might have been a night or there might have been a time where there was some sketchy level of communication. And you're, trying, you're wondering if he was with that other person during those moments. You know the truth. You don't need him to admit that. You close that chapter yourself, right? If it feels better for you to say to yourself that that night that I questioned him on blah, 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 and he was talking in circles and manipulating, manipulating and gaslighting me that night, he was with her that night. I suspect that why would we think different? So a lot of the closure that we're talking about. And, and the other thing that is probably happening here, you're talking, him, talking to him way too much. You're talking to him way too much. You, you, the two of you might be talking about the child. A lot of it is probably doesn't need to happen. You need to reduce the amount of time that you're, that you're talking to him because there's a good chance that he's probably doing what's called dog whistling, right? Saying little things here and there that he knows are going to trigger and press your buttons, mentioning this new girl, uh, saying that, you know, uh, yeah, I'll pick up the sun after my date with this new person, right? Knowing that it's going to trigger you, right? And you're still trying to heal. You probably don't even, you're, you may not even be aware of all, all of your triggers. We need to reduce the amount of time that we're talking to them. If we're at this level of rage, right? This level of rage, I have a feeling that you're talking to them too much. And so we have another, another so we're still kind of in the middle of it. The other thing is that I would highly, highly encourage for you to get involved in support groups. I have several, right? I actually have multiple support groups. They're all linked down below. I would get myself involved, um, you know, with uh, coaching or therapy. Obviously, uh, you're more than welcome to work with me. Um, and uh, all of my links for everything that I do are down below. Um, but the, the problem is, and the reason why I'm recommending that and, and also therapy, and I have links for uh, different therapists and things like that down below too. The, the reason why I'm recommending that is that, again, we have to get all these emotions out. They don't go anywhere. We got to start journaling. We got to start practicing mindfulness. Start, you got to start meditating. We got to start doing some things to get all of this pent up aggression, pent up emotions, unhealed wounds out. Right, because they're getting trapped in your body. So thank you very much for writing in. Uh, for those of you who would like uh, me to answer a question of yours, make sure you send it to justaskmatt at mattpfeiffercoaching.com. Again, that is justaskmatt at mattpfeiffercoaching.com. Just keep that email two to three paragraphs max and be very direct and to the point of what your question actually is. Uh, if you, The fastest way to work with me, though, is to uh, work with me in... Uh, my coaching community and all of the links to that are down below. That being said, thank you very much. And I will talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.